experiment chewing gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia. <laughs> it's over a year and a half I'm in America. I know I'm learned so much about this beautiful country. I'm remember the first week I'm was here, somebody has told me. The little green box on the corner was for mail. And the little red box for fire. <laughs> I'm thought, what a strange country. If you got a fire, you got to send a letter to the fire department. <laughs> so I'm walked over to the little red box and the sign is says, Break the glass and I pull it down the handle. This I'm a dead. <laughs> now believe me, Mamma Mia, you almost had your son back in Italy. <laughs> I was a pretty stupid in those days, huh, Mamma Mia? But now I'm a know much more. And I'm a can appreciate what a fine country is this America. And also the people who live here. Only yesterday I was uh, walking in the street, the manager come up to me and he's a uh, say, Hey, you got a nickel for a cup of coffee? This is a uh, touching me to the heart, the mamma mia. Here is an American, a man I don't even know. And uh, he's uh, worried if I'm uh, got a nickel for a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the people are wonderful. The country is uh, wonderful. And every night uh, when I'm uh, walking to my night school class, I'm a kind of singer with the happiness. America, I love you. You like a papa to me. From ocean to ocean. Ah, there's my school building. Oh, you mighty torch of a learning. You gigantic institution of education. Mamma mia, if I'm going to talk so good, why am I going to night school? <laughs> well, I'm going to cross the street. <laughs> Mamma mia, I think I'm better wait for the light. <laughs> well, I'm going to cross it now. <laughs> I think I'm better stand in the safety zone for a while. <laughs> I think I'm better get out of the safety zone for a while. <laughs> I think I'm better get out of the safety zone before I'm gonna get the kill. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful night. I hope I'm not gonna be too late for. Hey, what's this laying on the street? I'm gonna pick him up. Hmm, it's a wallet. Somebody must have lost. What well, I'm looking for you on is a name. Oh, here it is. Hitchcock. No, wait there. Oh, looks like it's a belong to an army general. Over here is a stamped in a gold, Jen Cowhide. <laughs> oh, here's a something. Identification card. Peter T. Simpson. In a case of illness, notify Mary Simpson. Poor man, I must be sick. Well, I'm going to tell this a policeman. Hey, Mr. Officer. Yeah? I'm going to find this a wallet. And maybe you know who's lost it. No. Nope. Search me. Oh, you think maybe you was lost it? <laughs> no, no. Where'd you find this, Mac? In the street today. And my name is Luigi. Let's see it. Sure, here. Did you look inside this? 
just for the name. I'm thinking you better call Mary Simpson and tell her husband is sick. What? <laughs> What's your name? My name? Why well, you want my name? Regulations, bud. Name is not the bud, it's Luigi Bosco. <laughs> Address? It's a 21 and not the Hall of Street. Well, well, why are you asking? Don't ask so many questions. The police department will notify you about this in a little while. Uh, the police department? You heard me. Please, uh, Mr. F- Mr. Policeman, I want a little favor. What is it? Let me put the wallet back where I'm found it. <laughs> then you go your way, I'm going to go my way, and we don't squeal on each other. Don't worry about a thing. Everything's going to be all right. All right. Quiet, please. Please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Hmm. Not here. Mr. Horowitz? Here. Yeah. Mr. Olson? Hey, yeah. Mr. Schultz? Si, si, senor. Mr. Schultz, please use the English language. Besides, senor means man, and I am not a man. Monsieur? That would still be calling me a man in French. Him, we better get you back to English before you grow a beer. (laughs) (laughs) Smile, everybody. (laughs) All right, that's enough. Now, class, today we... I'm here, Miss Posing, I'm here. Mr. Basco, that's the second time this week you've been late. You better have a good excuse. I'm going to go to one, Miss Posing. I'm going to find the wallet in the street and I'm going to give it to the policeman. He's asking me a lot of questions and he's taking me a long time. Well, all right, take your seat. Miss Posing, you... You think I'm a did a right to give a wallet to the policeman? Well, I'm sure you acted like a good citizen, Mr. Basco. That's right, Luigi. I would have done the same thing. Your whole me too. Oh, ain't we all a bunch of liars? <laughs> hey, sure, so you think I'm a did a wrong? Ah, uh, who knows? My cousin Wolfgang once found a diamond ring in the street, and he was faced with the same temptation. Finally, after struggling with his conscience, he turned the ring over to the police. Turned it right in, huh, Schultz? Well, first he had it appraised and made sure it was worthless. <laughs> so smile, everybody. Luigi, what are you so glum about? Well, uh, the policeman has uh, took my name and address, and I'm worried what he's uh, going to do with me. Do with you? Luigi, you got nothing to worry about. Yo, ho, you, you might get a generous reward from the gentleman who lost it, Luigi. A reward? <laughs> A reward, but I'm going to want the money for doing my duty like a good citizen. Ach, don't be so foolish, Luigi. If you want to be a gentleman, the first time he offers you the reward money, say no. And the second time, say no again, but a little more slowly. <laughs> and the third time, you grab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a shoot the support and he don't offer a third time. Then you should grab it the second time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mamma Mia, so early in the morning is a telephone ring. Hello. Hello, this is Peter T. Simpson, the man who lost that wallet. Oh, uh, this is a Luigi Basco, the man who's a found it. You feeling any better, Mr. Simpson? What? In your wallet, it's a teller how you're sick. Never mind that. Mr. Basco, you found my wallet yesterday and the police have returned it to me. Good, the police, they're very honest too. Mr. Basco, you listen to me. It's about the reward that Mr. Simpson had. It's all right. I'm adjusted to my duty like a good citizen. All right, Mr. Good Citizen. The police found only $30 in my wallet. What did you do with the other hundred? Not a hundred? What do you mean? You know very well what I mean. If you'll return it to me now, I'm willing to forget the whole incident. Not a hundred dollars? Now stop acting dumb, Mr. Basco. Hey, Mr. Simpson, I'm going to like what are you thinking about to me. And if you ever lose something again, I'm never going to find it for you. <laughs> All right, Mr. Basco. Now listen carefully. There was $130 in that wallet when I lost it. $30 in small bills and $100 bill. You sure there was a $100 bill in the side? I know, because that morning I cashed a check for $100 at the bank. Now you look here. You'd better bring that money over to my house by tonight, or I'll see you in court. Goodbye. Mamma mia. I'm about to get out of bed and run next door to Pasquale. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Pasquale, I'm, I'm going to get a lot of trouble. <laughs> Just look at my little pumpkin head. You're getting a real absent-minded. Look, you forgot to put your clothes on today. 
Hey, Pasquale, you've got to help me. You're standing there in your nightshirt, you look like that famous nurse, uh, Florence Nightingale. <laughs> Hello, Pasquale, listen to me. All right, the little cabbage you push. Tell the Papa Pasquale what's the trouble in your little head. Well, I'm a found a wallet yesterday, Pasquale, and I'm a turn it over to the police, and he's a give it to Mr. Simpson. And he's a taking me to court to punish me for a hundred dollars I'm gonna never took. Mm-hmm. What's new otherwise? <laughs> Luigi, you dreams is getting more complication all the time. No, Pasquale, it was a no dream. It was a real. It's a really happening. What? You mean you really find a wallet in the street and give it to the cop? Sure. Luigi, that's not the patriotic of taking the money out of circulation that way. Oh, yeah, but I'm spoiling and everybody. They said I'm a did it right to buy giving it oh, to Oh, so go to everybody for advice about your countryman, Pasquale, and what's happened to you? Trouble. Luigi, when do you want advice? You should have come only to Pasquale. Fella, who's got the brain to scatter away all of your little troubles? Hey, you're so right, to Pasquale. You're the biggest scatter brain I'm going know. <laughs> That's a funny thing. And when I'm going to say it, it's going to come out a different. <laughs> Pasquale, please, tell me what I'm sure to do. Mr. Simpson said it was $100 or more in the wallet. The cops said they found only 30 but I'm going to took it at 100 Pasquale, you believe in me, no? Sure, I believe in you, Luigi. Oh, thanks, Pasquale. You're a real friend. Now, let's split the hundred fifty-fifty, and I forget it the whole thing. <laughs> Pasquale, you... You really think I'm a took out that hundred dollars? I didn't say you did, and I didn't say you didn't. But if you didn't, then you should have did, because nobody's going to believe you didn't. <laughs> well, Pasquale... Parts of what you said I'm understand, but the whole thing don't make no sense. You mean nobody's going to believe in me, huh? Luigi, I believe you. I'm the only one who knows you're stupid enough always to be honest. Well, thank you, Pasquale. Is it not often you give me the praise? You're welcome, Luigi. Now, don't you worry, little banana nose. I'm brought you to this country. I'm a responsible for you. And I'm going to go to court to prove you innocent. Oh, thanks, Pasquale. Thanks. <laughs> Now I'm going to do you a little favor. Maybe you're going to do me a favor. All right, Pasquale, what's this a favor? <laughs> Marry my daughter, Rosa. Uh, answer is a no. <laughs> Pasquale, I'm a sorry. Then I'm a sorry for you. Luigi, you can expect a rough time when this Mr. Simpson's will take you to court. Yeah, but I'm a got the right on my side. Luigi, you shy a hundred bucks. You what they call a shyster. <laughs> Pasquale, I'm a never took it out of money, and you know it. I know it, and you know it, but the wallet don't know it. <laughs> Luigi, in America, they got a certain rules. Over here, possession is a nine-tenths of the law. Have you got the wallet? No. Then he only got a one-tenth of the law. <laughs> Already, they got you outnumbered. Luigi, it's a look like a jailer for you. Oh, no. Pasquale, I'm no kind of believe in America. Man can be sent to jail for doing something honest, like giving a back a wallet he's found. <laughs> Ooh, you green on you. <laughs> that shows how much you know about America. Luigi, don't you know, first place, uh, you violated the second biggest American law that says only full of citizens are allowed to find anything in the street. But if Pasquale... Uh... And then, after finding the wallet, you went and violated the biggest American law of all about a stolen property, the NRA. NRA? What should that stand for? Never return anything. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a little idea you'll find useful when you're busy working around your home or at your job. Occasionally, during the day, slip a stick of delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum into your mouth. Go right along working and chewing at the same time. You'll find that the smooth, pleasant chewing relieves the monotony, helps keep you from getting restless or tense. As a result, you naturally feel better and work better. Always keep a package of refreshing Wrigley Spearmint Gum handy so that you can chew and enjoy a stick whenever you want. 
And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, you don't believe what's happened to me. From doing a little thing like finding a wallet, it turned out to be one of the worst things in my life. Man is a Sam who took a hundred dollars from him. Pasquale is a Sam who gone to jail. How could such a thing happen to me? Mamma mia, you know I'm never taking things that you know, belong to me. Even at home, when I'm used to milk the cow. I'm always ask her first before I'm took the milk. <laughs> but maybe I'm worried for nothing because I know that once I see Mr. Simpson in the court, I'm explaining a story. He's not going to make any trouble. Well, well, well. A summons for Luigi Basco to appear in a municipal court this morning, eh? <laughs> I'm feeling terrible about it. Yeah, but Pasquale, is not right? Since, since I'm come to America, I'm always here. Honesty is the best policy. Luigi, you got to stop believing in them crazy perverbs. <laughs> they also got a saying in America, the early bird that catches the worm, right? That's right, Pasquale. Is that your ambition in life, to get up four o'clock in the morning to catch worms? <laughs> then they say, look before you leap, no? Yes, sir. So, all right. You stand up on top of the Empire State the Building, you look before you leap. You're still in a bad shape. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi... Let me pay that to Mr. Simpson is a hundred dollars and to settle the whole thing. Yeah, but Pasquale, I'm never took that money. Luigi, who are you thinking the judges are going to believe? A man with a million dollars in the bank or a fellow who's got a two collar buttons in his checking account? Mamma mia, what am I going to do? Luigi, my fellow boo Oh, hello, Schultz. I rushed right over as soon as I heard they are taking you to court. Now, smile, Luigi, and tell me what happened. What are you going to do? I don't know what to do, but Pasquale says I'm sure to pay Mr. Simpson a hundred dollars. I'm a dinner steal before he's a jump off of the Empire State the building and a kill us some early one. <laughs> Oh, that scheming Pasquale, has he got you for shimmered? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mr. Delicatessen. You, man. I'm ignoring, Pasquale. Ach, Luigi, stop looking so depressed. I'm going to get all your friends and neighbors, and we are going to defend an honest man. Oh, thanks, sure. Sure, we'll all go along with you to the court and give you encouragement. you got to win. I'm a fit of much better already. That's right. Now, stop going and smile. Be like me, Luigi. Always happy, always laughing. <laughs> 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 My rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> Session, Judge Mitchell presiding. Next case, Peter T. Simpson, plaintiff versus Luigi Basco, defendant. Your Honor, I am the attorney for Mr. Simpson. May I call on my client to take the stand? Well, see. <clears throat> now, Mr. Simpson, will you tell the court exactly what happened? Certainly. I lost my wallet last week. It contained $130 in cash, $30 in small bills, and a $100 bill from a check that I had just cashed at the bank in that amount. And when the police turned that wallet over to you, that hundred-dollar bill was missing? That is correct. That'll be all, Mr. Simpson. Your Honor, may I question the defendant now? Permission granted. Luigi Basco, step to the stand. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hooray for Luigi! Get it, Mr. Luigi, but I'll with you. Uh, Mr. Basco, will you please ask your friends to refrain from any further demonstration? Please, friends, no more refrains. <laughs> I'm sure in this court, truth and justice is going to win. Your Honor, I object. Sure, he objects to truth and justice. Your remarks are incompetent and irrelevant. Your relatives are incompetent, too. <laughs> Let's have order. Or I'll clear the court. Proceed. Mr. Basco, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and that much truth to help you, God? Yes, I'm, I'm always a tell the truth, once in Italy, my Uncle Pietro's goat Mr. was... Mr. Basco, who cares about your Uncle Pietro's goat? Huh? What did you say, please? I said, who cares about your Uncle Pietro's goat? The goat's a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> no commotion. Proceed. Mr. Basco, tell the court. How much do you earn in your antique business? How about... About twenty dollars a week when a business is a good. Uh huh. Mr. Basco, how can you live on twenty dollars a week? 
is a not easy. <laughs> Mr. Basco, I understand you have a mother in Italy to whom you write every week. That's right. I suppose you try to send her money occasionally? I'm going to try my best, but all I'm going to send her is a five dollars a week. Then you live on fifteen dollars a week. Mr. Basco, how do you do this? Every Monday morning he goes out and finds a wallet with a hundred dollars. <laughs> Mr. Basco, you could use a hundred dollars, couldn't you? Well, uh... Now admit it, you could, couldn't you? Yes, I could. Good. Now, say you had a hundred dollars and the money was all yours. What would you do with it? I think I would have given it to your client, Mr. Simpson. He seems to miss it so much. <laughs> your Honor, he would send that money to his mother, or he would live on it. I think I have established the fact that the defendant had the motivation and the opportunity to commit the crime as charged. We rest our case. Your Honor, I would like to say a few words before justice goes blind. Hey, you. <laughs> I can get back here sooner I'll have the officer throw you out. You get your hands off me. It's my parking tickets that's paying your salary. <laughs> Clerk, you may let him go. Who are you, sir? My name is Carl Schultz. I'm a close friend of the defendant. And I would like to act as his lawyer. Well, it's a little irregular. But since Mr. Basco has no official lawyer, I have no objection that Mr. Basco has none. Well, I should say... Yes, Luigi. Into my head, an idea just pooped. <laughs> All right, to you, Anna. Very well. Proceed, Mr. Schultz. Aha. But uh, first, I would like to question the complaintive, Mr. Simpson. <laughs> Mr. Simpson, step to the stand. Now, Mr. Simpson, what business are you in, please? I am a real estate operator. And how much do you earn a week? In the neighborhood of $1,000. That's no neighborhood, that's a whole development. <laughs> Are you positive you cashed that check for the hundred dollars you are talking about? Of course I am. I could tell you about every big business deal I've had since 1915. Ah, big deals you remember, but very often you could forget little ones, hmm? What? To you, a hundred dollars is very little. Quick, what's the color of your tie? Blue. It's green. <laughs> what color socks are you wearing? Red. It's brown. Has the judge got brown hair or black hair? Uh, black hair. The wrong is bald. I object. <laughs> I don't blame you, Your Honor. If I was bald, I would have checked myself. <laughs> now, Mr. Simpson, I want you should look in your checkbook and see if you really cashed that check. Certainly. Here's my checkbook. I'll open I it. I object to this form of questioning. I object to you! <laughs> Your Honor... May I see you in your chambers for a few moments? Court is recessed for five minutes. Oh. Well, Luigi, that Schultz is a mess things up a plenty, eh? Hey, Pasquale, I'm scared. Why the judge and Mr. Simpson is go in that little room? Why you think? To play Canazza? <laughs> Mr. Simpson, he's just found a new evidence he's going to show to the judge, you see? And in five minutes, you're going to have a choice. Twenty years or life. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Luigi, is not too late. I should have paid Mr. Simpson a hundred dollars. You just say the magical little word to my daughter, Rosa, or it's a behind the bars for you. All right, Pasquale, I'm a got to no choice. <laughs> <laughs> It just so happened uh, she's waiting outside in the hall. I'm going to call her in. Rosa! 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 You call me, Papa! Yes, yes, to my little butterfly. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> Hello, Rosa. <laughs> Rosa, now I'm going to give the money to the judge. And the court is back in session. Mr. Bosco, 
Would you please come up here? I'd like to talk to you. Please, the judge, because I'm not a citizen, you're going to find them guilty? Mr. Basco, in America, our courts see that justice is done to citizens and non-citizens alike. Oh, thank you, Judge. And furthermore, Mr. Basco, there's no reason for you to be nervous. Huh? During the recess, Mr. Simpson revealed to me that he found that uncashed check in his checkbook. Mamma mia! Oh, thank you, thank you, friends. Schultz, thank you very much. Uh-huh. Mr. Basco, I owe you a great apology. That's all right, Mr. Simpson. We all make mistakes sometimes. Uh, Mr. Basco, I feel terrible about all the trouble I've caused you. Your character is worth more than all my money. Luigi, quick, make a swap. (laughs) Mr. Basco, I never cash this check. I've endorsed it over to you. I'd like you to cash it. No, thank you, Mr. Simpson. Oh, I'm a dropped it. Luigi, pick it up. Oh, no, they're not going to catch me twice in the same day. And so, Mamma Mia, everything is a turn out all right. After the court, Mr. Simpson was a feeling terrible. And he's a tried to make me take the check. I'm a said I'm a don't want it. Schultz is a said to take it. Pasquale is a said to grab it. <laughs> but I'm a say it's a no belong to me. Men is a say it's a no belong to him. So, Mamma Mia, you're going to find it inside of this letter. It's a now belong to you. Well, Mamma Mia, I'm going for a walk now. And I'm going to walk with my head high up in the air. Is it not so much that I'm proud? Is it just that I'm no one to take a chance on finding any more wallet? <laughs> Your loving son, Luigi Basco, the little immigrant. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they'd like to remind you that somewhere right near where you live or work, there's a friendly merchant who displays popular, well-known brands of chewing gum for your convenience. Next time you're at the store, stop at the gum counter and get a few packages of delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Enjoy chewing this healthful, refreshing treat yourself, and keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum on hand for your family and friends to enjoy. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at the same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is produced and directed by Cy Howard and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Dermott. (laughs) J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Spalding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Blood Gluskin. Friends, the Wrigley Company invites you to listen to their other program, The Gene Autry Show, every Saturday night over most of the same CBS station. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.